Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and today I have a really good build for you all. I'm actually genuinely excited about this one because as I was making it, I was getting pretty hyped for it myself. It's very hard, I have an upcoming character, and every time I do a build, it's always like, mmm, but what if? And today we're going to be talking about the ultimate trigger brand. So if you're unfamiliar with the trigger brand, which I don't know why you would be, you're looking into a gunslinger specific build after all. The trigger brand is, well, a gunsword user. The, the gunsword user, they get all these very interesting abilities that are focusing on slashing an opponent and shooting him at the same time. Pretty simple overall, but the, it goes a lot deeper. The idea of a gun sword is always one that's pretty steeped in technology. It's something that is, it's shown as like a type of technology that has advanced past what other people have done. And this build takes that to the next level. It's going to highly integrate the inventor archetype dedication to create a character that is dynamic and improves upon what the trigger brand already does in fact it works so well together you would think it was designed to be this way so i'm very very excited to bring to you all my ultimate trigger brands all right and starting off and before i get into this i'm aware that this image here is the gunbreaker from final fantasy 14 and this is also an image used from someone's DMs Guild thing. It's com They used non uh, copyrighted material or copyrighted material on their thing. I'm just taking it because the layout works really well. But I'm aware. I'm aware, but I also do not feel bad. So <laughs> anyway, the attribute focus. So attribute focus, obviously, we're going to focus on decks first. Pretty simple, pretty easy to guess, honestly. After that, it's going to be intelligence followed by strength. Now, I will state you will need to start off with a plus two modifier for your intelligence out the gate because you're going to need it for the inventor archetype, which we're taking at level two. So that being the case, you need at least a plus two in your intelligence. But after that, I mean, you could do two plus twos for your strength and intelligence if you want. However you want to go about it. The biggest thing is obviously we're going to be using our decks and our strength is going to be for the melee use of our weapon. But obviously as a gunslinger, even though we're going to be using a combination weapon, which is what the, the gun blades are in this game, when they're in melee form, we still don't actually get the proficiency because their weapon group changes. So we only get the proficiency when they're in firearm form, which is completely fine. Honestly, it's not anything that we have to worry about for the build. But you will want to boost your strength. But I do state that intelligence is actually going to be relatively important for this build, especially depending on how much downtime you have. You can alternate intelligence and strength in this if you want. The only important thing is you need at least that plus two intelligence. For skill focus, we're going to focus on crafting, but I will state you do not select crafting at level one. You're going to get it at level two when we pick up the archetype dedication. After that, we're actually going to get acrobatics. Acrobatics has a ton of ways your character can get out of harm's way more easily. And as a gunslinger trigger brand character, one of the big things about this particular style of play is that even though you are kind of like a melee martial character in a lot of ways, you are not going to have the same tankiness as, say, like a fighter or as a champion, obviously, or as a barbarian has. So you need ways to get in and out of combat, and acrobatics is going to make sure that our character stays alive, which is very important. And last is thievery. I mean, they have Trigger Brand has a thievery ability, and I, something I noticed and something I think is going to come up very soon, thievery does not have many skill feats in the game currently. So that being the case... I have a prediction that thievery is going to come up in some more skill feats that they're going to be releasing, maybe even with the new remaster. That being the case, having thievery in your build might not be a terrible idea. In the end, it really is up to you. I just selected thievery because it's kind of, you already get it as being a trigger brand anyway, so you might as well get good at it. And if your group needs a lock picker, well, then you can do that too. Plus, it plays into the fact that your character is very dexterous with their hands 
and they're kind of crafty. So the theory is just kind of another aspect of that and is great for role playing purposes. So for our way of or our gunslinger way that we're going with, we're going with the trigger brand. Duh. <laughs> it's <laughs> it would be a very silly build otherwise. But yeah, the trigger brand is going to be our major focus as it's going to give us, well, obviously good feats for what we're doing. And as well, it's very thematic. And there are just some genuinely good deeds in here as well. So starting off at level one, honestly, I don't know how this feat has slipped by me so easily, but Munitions Crafter is actually a really good feat. Not only does this give us crafting. Oh, yeah, actually, we did. Hmm, interesting. I actually didn't think about that. Uh, this gives us crafting. OK, so I guess we're getting at level one no matter what. Well, whatever, that's fine. This gives us crafting and this gives us alchemical crafting, which is a very good get for a feat. But on top of that, we also get infused reagents where we get a number of infused reagents at the beginning of the day where we can make multiple munitions two per infused reagent. And there's a really good elemental ammunition that you can pick up at level one that gives you a splash bullet that you can shoot at enemies. And so starting at level one, you get two of these bullets in a day. This just fits like Gunbreaker specifically from Final Fantasy 14, but it, the idea in general is really cool. You are a crafty, ingenuitive style of gunslinger and you, you know, make these bullets to do different things with your gun blade, which I think is just super cool. Now, at first, our advanced alchemy is only level one. So up until quite a bit into the build, the only thing we're going to be really adding to our character are infused, you know, the uh, elemental munitions and whatever other level one ammunition or bomb. You can also make bombs, which also could be a really good thing as well. In any regard, it gives our character a lot more to do than just the normal gunslinger things inside and outside of combat. Honestly, Munitions Crafter is just a really solid. It's it's essentially an archetype feat you can select at level one for Alchemist, except you don't aren't limited to selecting more Alchemist feats. And it's very specific for the class. It just it's so good. I don't know how I have like missed this particular feat for so long. I think it's absolutely amazing. At level two, we're going to select the inventor dedication. Now, the inventor dedication is not going to do a whole bunch for us. It would give us crafting, but Munitions Crafter did that for us anyway. So unfortunately, there's not really much. The only thing it really at. Oh, we also get the inventor skill feat, which is nuts because inventor inventor is 11 uh, level seven skill feat normally. And this will allow your character to essentially research ammunition that you normally would need to find schematics for. If you're playing in base setting for Pathfinder 2nd Edition in Galarian, getting access to blueprints for specific types of ammunition would be incredibly difficult. That being the case, the inventor feat will allow us to spend downtime to invent new types of ammunition that we can use with our gunblade. It fits so perfectly into the build and is really nice. Another cool, interesting thing is one, obviously, we're also going to make our combination weapon our our innovation, more or less. And innovations do allow for any common nor uh, any common simple or martial weapon or for any one that we have access to. Now, the combination weapons are all uncommon, as most our firearms are. But because we're a gunslinger and obviously a trigger brand, we're going to have access to it. So that means we can make it our innovation. And as a fun side note, that means no one else is technically trained in our gun, even though there's actually nothing different. It doesn't do anything differently than a no normal gun blade, actually. It's just because it's at our innovation, you made it for some reason, people can't be trained with it. So that's a very interesting aspect and something that I think is a little bit fun with this. And I kind of the core concept, right? So the big point of the ultimate trigger brand is that your character is super specialized in a type of weaponry that does not quite exist or not to everyone in a way. And your character is just very unique in the use of this skill. And because our gunblade is our innovation, that makes gunblades 
or whatever, whatever kind of combination weapon you have, feel much, much more special to our character. We'll be able to enhance it and make our particular weapon really, really good. So I'm very excited for this. Even though the second level feat doesn't give us too much besides a really good skill feat, I do like a lot of the, the lore implications for your character or the RP implications that this has. It, it just fits with the build so well. All right, at level four, we're going to actually take the basic breakthrough and we're going to take Explosive Leap. Explosive Leap is an insanely good ability. It lets you make a 30 foot jump. No, you know, as long as you land on the ground or you fall, all that kind of stuff. Explosive Leap is really good. It gives our character a level of like dynamicness in combat. We can go a lot of places. And even though it does have the move trait, which does provoke most reactive strikes, which is attack of opportunities, if you're not familiar with the new terminology from the remaster, this will, there's almost no reactive strikes that can stop movement unless you're going against like a monk specifically. So this can also be a really good disengagement tool if we're in a very bad situation. I just love the fact that you can move 30 feet in like any direction. I mean, up up onto a banister, all kinds of stuff. This is so good and it makes the character feel very dynamic. Now it is an unstable action. There's likely a chance you won't be able to do it multiple times in a combat round, but that's okay. And because this, this build doesn't use any kind of focus points or anything like that, fixing up your innovation or our combination weapon in this situation is gonna be pretty easy to do in our 10 minute downtimes whenever your team settles down to uh, recoup some of their some of their resources. So. Overall, I really love Explosive Leap, and I think it's a really good get this early on in the build, especially as it genuinely does make your character feel like they're very dynamic in a lot of situations. Next up at level six, we're taking Trigger Brand Salvo. I find this one really funny because Trigger Brand Salvo was literally added just for Trigger Brands when Gunslingers could actually already get the uh, Blast and Stab which is essentially the same feat, but this is going to be one of our bread and butter kind of abilities. What it allows us to do very easily is you strike with your, your melee weapon, which is going to be the lower of our proficiencies. But if we hit, we can also shoot the enemy with an additional plus two circumstance bonus to our attack roll for our gun, which we has our higher proficiency, which means we have actually a really good chance of critting on our second strike and you don't need to use an interaction or an interact action to swap your gun to range mode to do this. This is going to be our generic bread and butter ability that we're going to use in a lot of situations when we're making attacks along with obviously the trigger brand reload that allows us to step and make a strike or uh, to st not make a strike. To step and reload our weapon as well as swapping it to a different mode depending on what the circumstances might call for. This is overall just what is going to be necessary for the build. It's it's unfortunate that for a quite a good amount of time, we're not going to have many other unique strike actions that we can really utilize, but that's going to be fine. We have our elemental munitions so that we can change things up that way. And of course, the various mobility stuff from explosively plus acrobatics as well. This is just a really solid feat, and it's going to be our core combat feat moving forward. All right, at level eight, we're actually going to pick another inventor feat as we're going to take basic modification. Basic modification is going to give us access to the segmented frame, which allows us to change our innovation. So it gains the modular trait for slashing, bludgeoning, and piercing, which is really good. So no matter what combination weapon you're utilizing, as an interact action, you can change its damage type, which is incredibly solid. Not only that, but this actually allows you to collapse our weapon down to a light bulk size and give it a bonus to stealth checks and making it concealable. So this is something that allows your character to even sneak your weapon into certain situations. It gives that level of engineering that's going to make this build feel really good. You're going to feel like an inventor gunslinger, which is the perfect combination in this way. And there's so many ways that this can be insanely useful, whether it's triggering enemy weaknesses, whether it's you're trying to destroy a certain type of objects that will have resistances to different types of damages, or whether you just need to sneak your weapon into a place and hide it in your waistcoat. 
in, in any regard, this is actually an insanely powerful ability if you know how to utilize it well, and it really enhances the flavor of our ultimate trigger brand. All right, now at level 10, we're going to take munitions mach machinists yeah munitions machinist essentially what this will allow us to do is our advanced alchemy level is now considered three levels less than our current level which gives us the higher levels of the elemental munitions as well as a variety of other ones that i will mention a little bit later i'll have a list of ammunitions i recommend for this build in the description down below actually that's a very good point to make the the builds are always going to be available when I remember it, sometimes I forget the first day in the description. So go down to the description to see the build, see my recommendations as well. You can also join our discord. And hey, since we're talking about, you know, plugs, uh, like follow, subscribe, you know, all, all that jazz, just so that you can see the awesome builds that I come up with every week and as well get all your tabletop news and all other TTRPG related stuff. Munitions machinist is just going to be necessary. It's going to let our bullets overall keep up and make the the special bullets we do every day, which at this point, we're making 20 bullets in a day. That's probably more than you're ever going to actually need to use. So this is going to be very handy or bombs or whatever you, you want to make with your advanced alchemy stuff. It's so good. It's such a good feature. I just, I'm blown away by how solid the munitions alchemy stuff is in the gunslinger it just makes the class feel really fun at level 12 we're gonna take megaton strike this is our second major combat ability and it's going to be a really good one it gives you essentially a power attack with our gun blade which is going to be really cool so <clears throat> the the best way is honestly just to you could use the unstable feature if you want to to get that even bigger hit which, you know, definitely I think is worth it sometimes. But you got to remember, this is also tied to our explosive leap. So you have to sometimes choose unless you get really lucky on your unstable roll and you are able to maintain your innovations function. In any regard, just the base Megaton Strike without going into its unstable functionality is very solid. And it gives us something else to do on our turn. It If we can't reload in a round or heck, even if we can reload, if we do our trigger brand salvo, right, which is a singular action, the best part is uh, Megaton Strike does not have the flourish trait, which I think normal power attack does. So you can actually use this with trigger brand salvo, and then you can strike the enemy with a mega hard hit. Again, it's going to be at our third attack penalty, which is not likely to hit, but it could. You know, it's something that is potentially really powerful or you can make a ton strike and then attempt your trigger brand salvo not giving your first attack a good chance to hit but if it does we will be making our second attack at essentially a plus four compared to our melee attacks because the gunshot is going to be our higher proficiency and it gets that plus two circumstance bonus meaning that essentially that's three attacks worth of damage in a round with with only your second multi-attack penalty modifier, which is actually, or the I guess the first penalty modifier, whatever, your minus five typically it will be a minus five for the sword swing, but if you hit, it'll be only a minus one for the gunshot, which is pretty nuts. It's a really solid combo. This gives us a really good way to hit an enemy really hard. And if our gun is unloaded for some reason, or we misfire in some way, this will give us a very powerful attack that we can utilize on our turns. At level 14, we're going to get our trigger ram blitz. This is going to be a feature that we're not going to use a ton, but if we want to do a lot of movement in a round, make a bunch of strikes on enemies, this is the way to go. Now, something about the trigger ram blitz that you need to be aware of, it does make you fatigued after using it. So it's something that is really good potentially in, in a lot of situations. And it does allow us to attack essentially three times without increasing our multi-attack penalty. Now, you can only pretty much do this once per combat, but it's a very powerful ability. Blends perfectly well in with our combination weapon. And because we're using a combination weapon, there's also some other really good benefits as well. Because we're using a combination weapon, we're going to be getting the critical fusion effect, 
which means that if we ever do critical with our ranged weapon or with our melee weapon, we can increase the damage. We can, what's the other one? I have it right here. We can also use the firearms critical critical effect, which is a 4-2 save against your class DC or the enemy becomes stunned one, which is not too terrible. Honestly, I just, I prefer the dealing two additional damage per weapon damage die. Very solid and... The only bad part is it does require the discharge of your weapon, so you can't shoot your weapon during your blitz if you do your critical fusion during, you know, one of your hits. In any regard, there's a lot of ways this can be very beneficial. You just need to judge on a case-by-case basis. The, the fact that you also can make a, a, a stride during these three attacks and attack at any point during them does allow you to create distance between you and an enemy, close the distance between you and an enemy, and as well, obviously they must be against different targets, so there's times to use this and there's times not to use this. The benefit of having the trigger brand blitz is it's an insanely powerful and effective strike that not only allows us to stride and strike three times at our full attack penalty, or without any attack penalty, I should say, but we can also fire our weapon without needing to change forms, which is actually another action efficiency. So it's a very efficient action when you can find the right circumstances for it. And overall, it just makes our character seem really cool because our character is dashing around the battlefield, doing all kinds of strikes, shooting people at the same time. It's really, really cool. All right, at level 16, we're going back into Inventor to the get another advanced breakthrough. This time we're getting the Gigaton Strike, empowering our already powerful Megaton Strike with additional features. It just makes a lot of sense for this build, and it empowers one of our attacks that we're already utilizing. At 18th level is actually going to be very interesting, and some of you might, might, you know, cock an eyebrow at this one, but... I actually went for another advanced breakthrough, this time selecting the level 4 inventor feat dual form weapon. The fun thing about dual form weapon is this allows our weapon with an interact action to change into any other common or common or weapon we have access to, simple or martial weapon. That means we could actually use this to get another combination weapon so at level 18 which i know is a little bit late in the game but you now have access to two incredibly powerful innovation weapons that can be used in different ways and overall is insanely powerful it gives us essentially a new form of our weapon doing our our cool engineering thing having a a cool combination weapon that can change like right, going from a rapier pistol into a mace multi-pistol or whatever. There's all kinds of really cool things about this, and I, I needed to fit this into the build at some point because I think the idea is really cool. And obviously, you know, the build does not need to operate 100% as what I made it. It can be exactly how you prefer. I love this idea because it means that towards the end of our character's journey, we are getting another form for our weapon, which gives us a bunch of new functionality. And heck, you can even change it to another type of just a plain firearm that you prefer, or you can go with a, mar a martial weapon, like a melee weapon that you're more focused on as well. In any regard, I like the idea of having another combination weapon kind of just with a single interact action. Like at this point, right, with a single interact action, we can make our weapon go into a ranged form. We can make our weapon go into another di different combination weapon. We can change the damage type of the melee part of our weapon. It's all really, really insane. And on top of all of that, whenever we, we reload, we can pop in a high level elemental shot to do a bunch of extra damage or any other of the cool ammunitions in the game. Our character is so incredibly dynamic, diverse, and more importantly, super effective in combat. Very powerful in combat in a lot of ways. I absolutely love the trigger brand. And speaking of, at level 20, I'm also going back and I'm picking hair trigger because hair trigger is actually a really fun feat. It, again, it's, it's so frustrating sometimes how so cool of feats you can select for some of these classes that like a feat that I could have picked up four or five levels or four or six levels ago 
I am picking up now because I love hair trigger. It's just right when the battle starts, you can just shoot someone with your, your gun. I think that's really cool. And the enemy becomes off guard to you until the end of your first turn. So then on, you know, your beginning turn, you can stride up and slash them with your weapon. I, I think this is just such a fun way of playing the game. It hair in there wasn't any other level 20 feats that I felt were overly necessary. We didn't really build into them, so they didn't really there wasn't anything to really do. I think hair trigger just works really well. Makes our character seem super proficient and, and, and really awesome because right as the battle starts, before anyone even gets to roll, you're already laying a shot off on an enemy, which I think is incredibly cool. All right, now for my archetype recommendations, this is actually a kind of hard part and mostly because the build already does everything it really needs to. It was hard to kind of select. Now, obviously my first pick is Acrobat, because I mentioned acrobats would be very helpful for getting out of a lot of situations. And honestly, we can use acrobat for a lot of cool flair and dynamics in combat, making our tumble through even better, even allowing us to trip an enemy with a tumble through, meaning that our character is a flippy dippy character going through the combat, tripping enemies up and just being really anime, which I think is really cool. So acrobat fits with it perfectly. So if you're using the free arc, the free archetype rule, which I do recommend everyone use because I, I don't know why you wouldn't. Honestly, the the acrobat is definitely going to be the way to go. And depending on, you know, if you use free archetype as written, how we do it is we have free archetype, but the free archetype slots must be non multi-class archetypes. So we actually can take multiple archetypes at the same time, but you're using your class feats for multi-class archetypes and you're using your, your free archetype slot for non-multi-class archetypes. But rules is written, you do need to be careful with this because we do very heavily invest in Inventor really early on. So you could just take Inventor with those slots, select some Gunslinger feats that you feel is really fun and, and works really well with the build. And then you can blend in between levels Acrobat as necessary. Now, the second one is actually a tie, and this is depending on what kind of combination weapon you want to use. If you're using a single-handed weapon, I'm going to recommend Duelist. This empowers a lot of single-handed play, making your weapon do extra damage. But not only that, but we could also get the parry trait through this, which I think is insanely good. And if you're using a single-handed combination weapon anyway, unless you pick up some other kind of feats, you can't reload your weapon if there's another weapon or shield in that hand. Again, there are ways around this, of course, but at base, not so. That being the case, you can, of course, benefit from Duelist very heavily in this. The second part is actually going to be Mauler. If you're using a two-handed combination weapon, Mauler is going to heavily enhance your two weapon functionality, giving you the ability to easily knock back or trip your enemy as you're, you're, you know, breaking them down. Very, very good. And both of these style blend in actually super well to this particular style of play because it gives us more combat abilities that we can use rather than just the trigger brand salvo or megaton strike. Last but not least, honestly, was a hard one and I'm going to say this one very purely because it has one of my favorite abilities that is so bizarre that you can't get as just a gunslinger. And that's actually going to be the the bullet dancer. Bullet dancer is very garbage for us in a lot of ways. The the initial stance that you would get with it only requires simple weapons, which I don't know if there's a combination simple weapon. There might be. It's not going to be super relevant to us. The biggest thing I wanted to select from it is Black Powder Blaze, which you can get as a, or is it Black Powder Boost or Blaze? Black Powder Boost is the one you can select as a gunslinger, which does kind of the same thing as our Explosive Leap, admittedly without the unstable tag, but Explosive Leap just kind of did it better, which is why I didn't end up selecting it. But this also gives us Explosive Blaze, Exp or not Explosive Blaze, Black Powder Blaze. Black Powder Blaze is so good because you get to do the leap action and fire at the same time at any point during the leap. A really good ability to, you know, have extra mobility on the battlefield. This would be the only reason why I would select the Bullet Dancer. There's not really anything else that really is good unless you want to mix in. Of course, if you're using like a single-handed weapon, cat.
Why? Why must you bite me? See, he's biting me. This is what I have to deal with all recording. <sighs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Bullet Dancer just... It's, it's, it's a very garbage archetype, I'm not gonna lie. It's super specific, and it, like it's not even great for Gunslinger, which would be one of the two classes you would think it'd be good for. I don't know. In any regard, the Black Powder Blaze is really good. And so if you're selecting only three feats in your free archetype, Black Powder Boost and Black Powder Blaze are worth it, even though the initial dedication feat is not. So it's really good to parallel with the build. But obviously, I would recommend the two higher choices on the archetype list first. All right. So let's get into the types of ammunition. Now, as I said earlier, it doesn't really matter what combination weapon you're utilizing. There's they they all got some stuff to add to it. And of course, if well, there's a part we'll get to later. There's some really cool ancestry based ones. So pick whatever suits your fancy. It really doesn't matter. Your damage is going to be roughly the same. Obviously, there's some combination weapons that are a little bit more damage efficient, but maybe there's some other traits. I don't know. It's all up to you. And honestly, whatever your character style is, because the type of weapon you utilize does kind of change the dynamics of your character. But let's look at the types of ammunition I recommend with your munitions crafter feat. Now, I did mention this one earlier, but elemental ammunition is really good. At base, at level one, it gives you one persistent damage of a type of element of either acid, cold, electricity, fire, or poison, which I think is really cool. And it does one splash. The splash is also really cool because the enemy also takes the splash damage that you're firing at. Now, this does go up to 2d4 at level 5 and 2 splash damage and 3d4 at level 11 and 3 splash damage. This is going to be our very commonly used damage type of ammunition. And again, once you hit level 10, you're going to have 20 of these thanks to how the infusions work where you make batches of bullets, essentially two bullets per infused reagent. You get a number of reagents equal to your level, which means level 10, we get 20, which means most of our shots in a given day are can be very elementally focused. Granted, you can't change the elements after you make them at the beginning of the day. So it's good to have a good variety in case you come against enemy weaknesses. In any regard, a very powerful type of ammunition and going to be the bread and butter of the ammunitions that we're going to use. Next up is actually going to be Life Shot. This is actually insanely powerful for the gunslinger specifically because not only is it something that we can select once we pick up the advanced munitions or whatever or the what's it called the munitions machinus at level 10 but what it does is at this level which at level 10 we do get 5d4 plus 7 hit points and a plus 2 bonus to any saves against disease and poisons for a minute it's essentially an elixir of life that we can shoot at our allies. If our ally is willing for the shot, they actually become flat-footed. And since we're a gunslinger, that gives us an insanely high chance to crit our ally, which doesn't double the amount of healing, but it does allow us to roll the healing and take the better of the two results, making it very efficient. This is an insanely good function that we can throw into our character to heal someone else or even ourselves. I mean, I love the idea of loading up a gun and just putting at your head and then boom shooting yourself for healing or shooting like in the air above you and giving yourself a healing a healing burst there's so many really cool ways that this can be done and i absolutely love life shot it's insanely powerful for this build and the last spell i'm going to recommend is going to be rusting ammunition this is just mostly for any kind of metal objects you want to come across it does persistent I think just straight persistent damage now uh, because of how they're changing some things. Yeah, the target takes persistent damage for a duration determined by the ammunition. Yeah, 3d8 persistent damage, typeless, so there's no possible resistances. And if it's an object, ammunition destroys a five foot cube at the moderate level. We cannot get the greater level, unfortunately, because our it'll be level minus three. But Getting this at level 16 is actually super not bad. And it at the end game, you start running into a lot of enemies that are a lot more like metallic or golems or the like. 
So this is actually an insanely good bullet. Not as effective as elemental as far as like general use, but in the specific situations that you need it, this is also a very good one. All right, and last but not least, the ancestry for ancestry heritage recommendations. This is gonna be similar to the last build I actually did because my first one is going to be elf and my second one is going to be dwarf. And the biggest reason is they have some really cool ancestry weapons. The the uh, the mithril tree and then the various dwarf guns. There's actually a lot of dwarf guns like the hammer hammer mate or hammer cannon or whatever hammer hammer pistol hammer pistol I think is what it is. So these are really good if you want to use those ones. The mithril tree especially will get a um, special note here as it does carry the parry trait, which for a two handed weapon. With the Mauler dedication, this is actually a really solid weapon that we can overall utilize as both a spear and as a, a archivist, I believe, which it's insanely powerful. And the whole flippy dippiness works really well with the elf and elves also gain a really good speed bonus. So that all works really well. And of course, if you're going dwarf, dwarf has actually a lot of good mean like ammunition crafting and engineering type feats that go really well with this build thematically so either way you go can be really really good but hey that's gonna be it for my ultimate trigger brand hopefully you all enjoyed if you did please leave a like and subscribe and as well let me know what you think of my ultimate trigger brand down in the comments below but that's gonna be it for me thank you all so much for watching good luck with your games leave the bad luck to me and I'll see you all next time. Bye.